this and every Sunday on Ahumaka 99.5. 3 and verse 17. We're going to start there. Now listen, get your Bible out. Come on, get your Bible out because this is important. You know, I'm speaking to Ghana and to those ones in the rest of the world. Amen. To hear the word of the Lord. We're going to look at what God is saying in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. And the Bible says, And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. The word today is do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, everybody has a different name for a purpose. So you can point out or recognize somebody. But if you want the spiritual power or authority to work, you have to call on the name of Jesus Christ or the name of the Lord Jesus. Some people are calling on the titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Those are not names, they are titles. We need to call on the name because the name has authority and it has power. So I'm going to look at an example today of what the prophets, or I would say the apostles of God, when they looked at the name of Jesus Christ, how they considered it. Because you're supposed to recognize that name today, amen, and follow suit, whatever they're doing. So we're going to go to the book of Acts, chapter 4. Praise the name of Acts, chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. But I just want to say, in Acts, chapter 3, there was a notable miracle that happened. There was a man that was impotent all his life. But Peter and John rose him up, amen, in the name of Jesus Christ. And he was able to get up, walk, and leap, amen. After all those years, amen, where he was suffering, amen, being impotent, unable to walk, crippled, amen. But when he called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, something happened, amen. In the book of Acts chapter 4, amen, the Bible says, And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. So the people that were in charge at that time, amen, the scribes and the Pharisees and whatever they may be, the priests of that time, they didn't want the men of God to preach in the name of Jesus Christ. It's the same thing today. People don't want you to teach in the name of Jesus Christ. People don't want you to cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ. People don't want you to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It's the same thing that was happening then. It's the same thing happening now. The Bible says they were grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. They were worried. I'll tell you what, some of you pastors have got to be worried. Just like they were grieved and worried, because they wanted Father, Son, Holy Ghost today. Well, they wanted no name. Amen. When they were preaching the word of God. The Bible said, And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now even time. So Peter and John, what was their crime? Because they healed a man, amen, that was sick or impotent all his life. He couldn't walk. He couldn't do anything. But because a notable miracle was done, they locked up Peter and John. How many of the prophets and the apostles are being locked up today? Why? Because they're preaching the true word of God. They're preaching in the name of Jesus Christ like the apostles did. The Bible said, how be it? Many of them which heard the word believed and the number of men was about 5,000. So even though they were locked up or held, there was 5,000 men, praise the name of the Lord, that the Bible said believed. How many men do you have in your church? How many men do you have in your church? Well, well when he preached in the name of Jesus Christ, 5,000 men came. That doesn't include women and children. 5,000 men, praise the name of the Lord. And it came to pass on the morrow that the rulers and elders and scribes and Annas, the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. So they came together to see what they could do. It's a problem for them. Why? Wow. The establishment. They were, they were seeing the power of God 
Amen. They were seeing the authority of God where people, amen, were being healed. People were coming to Christ, amen, and they didn't like it. Just like today, they don't like it that the people are finding the true word of God. The Bible says, and when they have set them in the midst, they ask, by what power or by what name have you done this? Now, look at that. They knew that there was some power and they knew there was some authority. So they asked the question, by what name? Amen. By what power and by what name? What name are you using when you're casting out demonic forces? What name are you using when you're, when you're raising them? What name are you using when you're asking God to heal somebody? What name are you using when it comes to salvation? What name are you using? Amen. When it comes to baptism, praise the name of the Lord. They asked them that question. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he's made a look, it's just been very clear. If you examine what has happened, a man for all his life that was begging money, but then when he met the apostles of Jesus Christ, the true men of God, look, there's everybody running around saying they're apostles today. I've never met so many apostles, apostles today. But how many of them are healing anybody? How many of them, oh God, are casting out demons? How many of them, amen, that if you're sick and you go to them for healing, they're going to heal you? I don't find hardly any. Why? Because they're not apostles. If they were apostles, they'd be able to do the thing that the apostles did. They're not apostles. They just have titles. Well, some people are just using titles today. Amen. But they have no authority. Amen. Pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. He said, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name, that by the name of what? Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you have crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him that this man stand here before you whole. Pray God. You know, they were looking at Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ is dead. What did they do? They crucified him, they beat him. Huh? They buried him in the sepulchre. Amen. But he raised again, he was raised again upon the third day with resurrection power. And when they went looking for him, they couldn't find him. Why? Because he was risen. It was by that same resurrection power, amen, by the name of Jesus Christ, it's the reason why that man was made whole. So when you're looking at that, we have a dead God. We haven't got a dead God. We have a resurrected God. Pray God, in the form of Jesus Christ. He said, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become what? The head of the corner. Oh God, he's a capstone. He's a capstone. He is the head of the corner. So he is the main stone. If you take away Jesus Christ, amen, out of deliverance, there's no deliverance. If you take Jesus Christ out of healing, there's no healing. If you take Jesus Christ out of baptism, there is no baptism. You've got to call upon the name of Jesus Christ. The apostles knew that. The apostles of the day knew that. How come you don't know that, men of God? You say that God's called you to be an apostle. You say that God's called you to be a prophet. But you don't know that you've got to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't know that you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't know that you have to cast out demonic forces in the name of Jesus. You don't know those things. How come you don't know those things? Well, Peter... And John knew, all the apostles knew of that time, but how comes you don't know? He said, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Now listen to verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. Look, you can't go to anywhere else to get salvation. Oh no. You can't sit at home and just be good to get salvation. That's not good enough. You can't just say, I'm going to be a good moral person. Uh, I'm going to feed the sick. I'm going to feed the, the, poor, um, the hungry or the starving. Amen. I'm going to feed, oh, I'm going to look after the elderly. I'm going to do all these things. That's not going to get you to heaven. That's not going to do it. Salvation will. It said, neither is there salvation in any other. He said, for there is none other name. There's no other name. There's none other, amen, name. 
under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. If you don't know that name by now, it's the name of Jesus Christ or the name of the Lord Jesus. Some people don't know that. Well, the apostles, Peter and John, they had to express it. Just like I'm expressing it to you today. Many of you are wondering, how come my prayers are not being answered? Because you're not praying in the name of Jesus Christ. How come I'm not being delivered? Because you have not been delivered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How come I've been baptized and I'm going back and forth? Because you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Not, not maybe. Or I could do this, I could do that. No. You have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It's the salvation name. It goes on to say, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus you know what? We have too many people today that have too many, they have two or three degrees in theology. They have a doctorate in theology, but they don't know God. They don't know God. They never even met God. They never had experience with God. Well, Peter and John, they looked at them, they said, look, they were unlearned uh, and ignorant men, but they recognized that they must have been with Jesus Christ because what they were saying made a lot of sense. Huh? There's too many of you going to the field. I've got nothing against you going to university to learn. Nothing against. But if you don't know God, if God hasn't called you, shut up. If God hasn't come to you directly and said, I have called you, sit down. Amen. Because you're, all you're doing is gaining knowledge, yet you know every scripture, but you don't know the one who wrote the scripture. You don't know the one who's given. You're looking at the word naturally, but you haven't got the spiritual word. You don't know God. He says, now when they saw the bones of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Are you with Jesus? Are you with Jesus? Because they were with Jesus. That's why they baptized in the name of Jesus Christ or the name of the Lord Jesus. What name are you baptizing in? Oh, you're baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Show me anywhere in the Bible. That anybody baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Nobody. All right. Matthew 28, 90 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. The name is singular. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. What name fulfills Father, Son, Holy Ghost? The name of Jesus Christ. And you don't know that. But you've been to university. You've been to university. You've been to college. Ceremony co college and, and all those times, but you don't know about the baptism. You don't know about the authority and power of Jesus Christ. And you want to teach and you want to you want to learn and you want to tell people what to do in the church. Come out. The Bible says, and beholding the man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against them. What are they going to see? They, because the same man that was a, now it, it was from a child. He was impotent. Now he was a big man and he couldn't walk. But now he's walking. What can they say? What can you say? Because he called upon the name of Jesus. The Bible said, any word or deed. Amen. You do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. What name are you doing it in? Are you doing it in your own name? Pastor this, bishop this. I see when, when they're advertising the church. What they, have, they got the pastor's picture on there. How come your name? How come your picture? is on the poster. How come your picture on there? Are you God? Oh God, no picture. Praise God. You're not, we're not idolizing you, pastors or bishop. You're there to preach and to teach. The people don't come to church because you, you're there. The people come to church because Christ is speaking through you. So what you're supposed to do is lift up the name of Jesus Christ. He said, if I be lifted up from this earth, I will draw all men unto me. But what happened? You want, you, want to, you want to big yourself up and say you're something. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, teacher, pastor. You are nothing without Jesus Christ. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle have been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny. You cannot deny the power of Jesus Christ. 
you can't deny the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. They recognize that. They said, what are they going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because there's certainly a notable miracle being done. Amen. He said, but that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten of them that they speak henceforth to no man in his name. So even at that time, 2,000 years ago, they told them not to preach, not to teach in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the same thing happening today. And the Bible said, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. You see? They told them then not to preach or teach, not to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, not to cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ, not to pray in the name of Jesus. But they told them to do anything else. But listen, here comes the man of God. I, I, can we find some Peter and John today? The Bible said in verse 19, but Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God judge ye who are we, we going to listen to are we going to listen to God and Jesus Christ or are we going to listen to flesh they know what they're going to this is what they said it said for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard have you seen Jesus Christ have you heard him because if you've seen him and heard him you'll be baptizing in his name if you've seen and heard him, you'll be healing in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have seen and heard him, you'll be delivering people in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have heard and seen Jesus Christ, you'll be preaching and teaching in the name of the Lord Jesus. But why don't you do that? Because you don't know God. The Bible says, so, so when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing, how they might punish him, them because of the people for all men glorify God for that which was done everybody you see the people they just want truth so when they saw the miracle they glorified but it was the men that had all the titles after their names the, the men that are studied uh, that their power was being lost all to some ignorant men they call them unlearned men but they were with Jesus Christ are you one of those learned men? Oh yes, learned men. That are stopping people from preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus Christ because you haven't got the revelation. Are you the one that's talking against the church that's baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ because you haven't got that understanding? Well, I want to say to you, I want to say to all the pastors, not just in Ghana, not just in West Africa, not just in all of Africa, but the whole of the world. If you don't know why you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you can contact me. You can get me on micromatics at hotmail.com or you can go on my website at apostolicchurchlivingwaters.com or you can contact me, contact this radio station and answer me and I'll sit down with you uh, if it has to be an hour or all day or all week with you and give you the scriptures and the understanding but don't go against anybody the Bible says in the scripture so when they had further threatened them they let them go finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people for all men glorify God for that which was done he said for the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shown Look, this man was 40 now. Over that. It was born impotent. And over 40 years old now, God had done a notable miracle. How did they do it? They called it, called it in the name of Jesus Christ. What name are you calling? Huh? Do all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. Amen. They threaten the men of God. They threaten them. Praise the name of God. People are threatening the, the men of God all over the world to stop preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus Christ. But I want to say to you pastors, if you believe the word of God today, don't just sit down. Uh, ministers, 
If you believe the word of God that you ought to be baptized in, in the name of Jesus Christ today, don't just sit down, do something. All right. You're, you're, you're baptized all your saints in the name of the Father and in the Son of the Holy Ghost. And you don't understand why it is wrong. Well, call me, praise him, because the scriptures are there. I'm going to give you a few examples. I just want to finish up on this one, and I'll give you a few examples. The Bible said, And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. We're going to go to Acts 19. Acts 19, verse 1 to verse 6. Right. Some of you have said, I've been baptized already. Well, well, if you got it wrong, you've got to be rebaptized. Listen to what the word is saying in the book of Acts 19, beginning at verse 1. And the Bible said, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and found a certain disciple. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And, and he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. See, there was a baptism before. John's baptism to repentance. Amen. But after that, something else, something changed. The Bible said in verse 4, Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do you see that? I'll read it again. When they heard this, like you're hearing the word, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hand upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So even Paul, that was not part of the original twelve, he was called by Jesus Christ on, his, on the Damascus Road when he went to destroy the church. Praise the name of the Lord. But he was baptizing in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Now, some of you have, got, have called yourself the Church of Pentecost. If you're part of the Church of Pentecost, you have to follow what the Bible says on the day of Pentecost. Let's go to the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verse 36 to 38. And listen to what the word says. It said, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God have made that same Jesus whom you have crucified both Lord and Christ now when they heard this uh, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles got time. And, and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do I read verse 37 again now when they heard this they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. What for? For the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Can you see that? That even on the day of Pentecost, they baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I said, Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Not any other name. Oh, yeah. You can try it. Amen. It's not going to work. Pray. You've got to call on the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. How long have I got? How long? Five. Okay. Uh, if you want to, if you want to call, I'm going to call this out. If you want to call in while I'm here, pastors, even pastors, or anybody wants I'll give only one or two calls today. Amen. You may have been baptizing Father, Son, Holy Ghost all your life. And you thought that was the right thing. But when you look at the scriptures, or Colossians 3 and verse 17, it's not so. You, yeah, a, a baptism is a deed. Salvation. Amen. Power and authority it has to be done in the name of Jesus Christ. But you can call me now at the radio station, 2 431 37753 that's 024-313-7753 there's another number also 0202-03-8937 0202-03-8937 if there's someone today maybe you have been going to church every week for healing and you're still sick you're still sick 
Maybe you are somebody that every time you are pregnant, you're losing, you're, you're losing that baby. And you've gone to your pastor and he's prayed and nothing's happened. Well, why don't you phone in today? And I will pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You've been baptized Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And after hearing that you have to do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, but you don't know anyone who, who re-baptized you, well, phone the radio today and I will give you my details and you can come and I will baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll say to pastors, if you don't know why you have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't know all the scriptures, I will show you. All right? You can call me on 02-431-37753. Amen. And I will give you all that, those information. I just want, while the calls are coming in, I may have to take some of the calls offline, but while they're still coming in at the moment, let me go to, to John, because it's so important. Amen. John chapter 3. Amen. I'm not going to read all of it. But John chapter 3 and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you're not born of the water and the spirit, you won't be able to see God. Amen. It says in John 3, 3, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So if you've been baptized, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and even if you got the Holy Ghost, that's not enough. You have to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ and you need the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the evidence or sign that you have the Holy Ghost, you will speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave you utterance. If you've never spoken in tongues before, that means you have never received the Holy Ghost. Don't let no one fool you. The Word of God is there. It says, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. If you don't know the truth, Oh God, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you really want the truth, you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Is there somebody today? Is there someone? I'm ready to pray at this time. If there's someone, amen. If you've got a pain in your arm, in your leg, even in your head, and you need prayer, I want you to lay hands on that part of the body. Oh yes. And, I, and I'm going to pray. If there's an issue that you have in the family, because there's problems in the family all over the world, but I want to say to you today, if you listen and believe the prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, amen, there will be a difference today. I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Lord God, I thank you and I glorify your name. Lord God, I pray a prayer of faith, oh God, today. Lord God, your sons and daughters are suffering because they don't know the true word, oh God, of prayer that has to be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, if those ones need healing, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal them, Lord God. If those ones need to be delivered from, oh God, from demonic force, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind and cast out every demonic force in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, if those ones have not been baptized at all or have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, that you touch their hearts today and cause them to want to give their life appropriately to you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, if there's trouble in the family, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ in the relationship Lord God I pray oh God in the name of Jesus Christ send healing and send deliverance Lord God if there's no oh God substance food for the children Lord God I pray that somebody will send help from the sanctuary to bless your people today oh Lord God oh God touch oh God the men of God men of God everywhere not just in Africa, not just in Ghana. Men of God everywhere. I pray, Lord God, that you touch their heart. It's not about organization. It's about Jesus Christ. It's not about, oh God, tithes and offering. It's about Jesus Christ. It's not about, oh God, you being famous. It's about Jesus Christ being known to the world. Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the men of God that you've called, wake them up. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you and we glorify your name. 
in the name of the Lord. Bless the name. Amen. Like I said, if you want prayer, it's like off air, maybe now, but we're going to close now and give God the glory and give him the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Act 2.38 Praise the Lord everyone. I'd like to give honour to the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Michael Maddox of the Living Waters Apostolic Church of the Lord Jesus Christ Worldwide UK. I'm going to be on Ocean One TV and Onka Radio every Sunday from 11.45 a.m. to 12 o'clock. Why not tune in and receive a blessing of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Join Bishop Michael Maddox this and every Sunday on Ahumaka 99.5 FM and Ocean 1 TV from 11.45 a.m. to 12 noon. And your life will never be the same. You can also watch us live from Facebook on Ocean 1 TV page.